Good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about Lesson 18. We are moving on, and I know that some of you haven't finished the test uh, that we you were doing yesterday, and we'll get to that on Friday, uh, so we'll have more time, but I think everyone just needs a little bit of a break from it. So, um, We are actually going to be talking about using variables and writing expressions with uh, variables. So we've kind of been doing this a little bit, but not as in-depth as we're going to be doing it. And this actually might help uh, some of you make a little bit more sense of what, what the variables are doing. So if you haven't already, because you're listening to me talk, you might be doing this opening exercise. So and this is the type of stuff we've been doing so far. How can we show a number increased by 2? And so you could think, well, a number, what number? I don't know. So we've got to use a variable. So a number, I'm going to use n. So I'm going to say n plus two. And that's great. Um, some of you might be thinking, well, can't, can't we be multiplying by two? Doesn't, couldn't that also be multiplying by two? And I mean, yes, increased can mean multiplication, uh, except if you have something like, um, you know, over here, if you had, you know, two times uh, one half. Well, what, what is this? This two, multiplying by, if I'm multiplying by a fraction, all of a sudden here, my answer is um, 1. Well, okay, so that didn't actually get, that didn't increase, that decreased. So increased is actually a, um, increased is actually an addition uh, term, not a multiplication, because it multiplication can make things increase or decrease. So anyways, can we prove this with a model? Yes, I could make a little model for representing n, and I could make a, another piece representing 2, and ta-da, we're adding them together. So... Easy enough. A little bit of a review. Um, so I'm going to actually do some of these exercises for you. And because the example is really just, there isn't a great example. The, the example is you need to be careful when you're using variables that you're very specific about what the variables mean. You need to include units. And it should actually represent a value, a number. Um, for those of you who have played around doing coding and stuff, you know, a lot of times when you're coding, you have to tell the, the in the code, you have to say whether something is called a, like a string or, it's a, or it could be a word or a sentence, or you have to say it's a number. And, you know, with a variable, a variable is supposed to represent a certain amount, a quantity, some number. It can't represent just, you know, Bob. It's not supposed to represent a color. You know, it or math, it's supposed to represent an amount. So uh, that can kind of help as we're working through stuff today. So in these first two exercises, here we have Joshua's speed is j. I'm going to do the first two. Joshua's speed is j, and this is saying it's an incomplete description. So Joshua's speed, j. Okay, so we're going to use j for Joshua's speed, and the description would be j represents Joshua's speed. Okay, what's wrong with that? That seems great. This says Joshua speed. J represents Joshua speed. The problem is, is if I say J equals four, and I'm saying that's a speed, you're wondering, or you should be wondering, for what? Am I going four miles an hour? Am I traveling, you know, four galaxies per second? Am I, you know, Superman and I'm going 400 miles per second as I fly? You know, what's going on here? Am I a snail? Am I going four inches per day? So you have to be more specific. So it's not just an amount of something. You, you need to be real specific with the type of the amount. So a better complete description would be, and I'll fill one in for you. Instead of speed, we could say that, um, we'll say J is Joshua's. Speed in miles per hour. That's a good unit because miles per hour could represent a person as they drive. Uh, it could also represent someone who's walking. You know, a lot of times we walk about two, three miles an hour if we're going real slow or if, you know, we're running. It could be like six, seven miles per hour too, so... Um, that, that's a good unit of time to use, or speed, rather. 
The second one would be uh, the another another example is Rufus's height, and it's saying let R represent Rufus's height. Well, you know, if Rufus is you know, a mythical giant, then we should probably be measuring him in something other than feet. Maybe a meters or yards would be better. If Rufus is a dog, we don't want to measure him in feet because, you know, most dogs aren't even higher than two feet. So why are we going to use feet? We could probably use inches or something. If it's a person, you're going to want to use feet. So let's say that Rufus is a dog. Notice I'm just making these descriptions up. It's just Rufus can be whatever. We're just trying to get in the habit of being more specific. So Rufus is the dog, so I'm going to say that R represents Rufus's height in, in inches. So you can do the last the continue on doing the other ones. You just are trying to be more specific than the incomplete description for those ones and kind of for these ones. Just be more specific. Uh, one thing you will notice is that these variables are capitals and a lot of times you will see that variables are actually usually lowercase and there's not really any right or wrong way to do that but just so you're aware most of the time when variables you see something that's a capital letter, it usually represents, those are usually used in formulas, um, but it doesn't really actually make any difference. Um, so here we have this, the second example, and I'm going to do uh, one, and then you're going to fill out, you can do the rest of them on your own, is, or maybe I'll do two even, is um, on actually writing them without having seen them ahead of time. So uh, it's a little bit more. We're actually writing the expressions now. So this first one says, Greg has two more dollars than Jeff. Write an expression for the amount of money Greg has. Oh, sorry. The instructions say we're going to try and find, identify the unknown quantity and write an addition or subtraction expression to describe that. So Greg has two more dollars than Jeff. Write an expression for the amount of money Greg has. And so... Uh, this we're going to use J to represent Jeff's money in dollars. And actually, one of the problems with writing expressions is who to pick for the variable and what to write. Now, remember that an expression is not an, is different than an equation, right? An expression is, I mean, these are expressions, right? But it doesn't say J plus 2 equals something. That's an equation. A lot of times, it can actually help to write an equation to write an expression because it might make a little bit more sense. So for this one right here, this says write an expression for the amount of money that Greg has. So we're actually writing an expression for Greg. Or sorry, for, yeah, we're, the expression is for Greg. So we could say that Greg equals, and that can help us kind of figure out that the amount of money that Greg has equals, and then... Um, it says that over here, uh, Greg has two more dollars than his brother Jeff. So, since we're trying to solve for Greg, right, our expression should actually include a variable for Jeff. So, it says Jeff, let J represents, sorry, let J represent Jeff's money in dollars. So, Greg has, our expression can be Jeff plus two, and that would give us Greg's money. And then in this last column, we're going to evaluate that. We're going to say, okay, well, what if Jeff has $12? We're just going to, you know, make something up. If Jeff has $12, then our expression over here, we could substitute that in. So we have here, we have, you know, the J plus 2 part, and we're looking at J plus 2. But we're going to take this 12 that Jeff has, and we're going to put it into our expression. We're going to substitute it in for J. So instead of J plus 2, we have 12 plus 2. And 12 plus 2 is 14, and Greg has $14. And if you go back here, Greg has two more dollars than his brother Jeff. Jeff has two, 12. Greg has 14. It all makes sense. So then the second one is actually doing the opposite. So this one says Greg has two more dollars than his brother Jeff. Same thing. But this time it says write an expression for the amount of money that Jeff has. So our 
So we're trying to figure out Jeff, what Jeff equals. Well, Jeff is going to equal, since it says that Greg has two more dollars than his brother Jeff. So if you're, if you're Jeff and your brother's Greg, he always has two more dollars than you. How do you figure out how much money you have? Well, you'd have to take two of his dollars away to get your amount of money. So since we're solving, since we're writing a expression for the amount of money that Jeff has, the variable we actually want to use is Greg. So we're going to take Greg's money, we're going to subtract 2. So Greg minus 2 should equal Jeff. Um, and then you could say, imagine Jeff has $14, and we're going to substitute that into our equation. So we're going to take 14, and we're going to put that into our expression. 14 minus 2 is 12. Jeff has $12. Awesome. So let me do the next one. I'll try and do it real quick because I know this video is getting kind of long. So Abby read eight more books than Kristen in the first marking period. Write an expression. Write an expression for the number of books Abby read. So I'm writing an expression for Abby. I'm trying to figure out what Abby has. So Abby has something. And that's what my expression would be that I'm trying to write. So that means if I'm trying to write an expression for Abby's books, I'm actually going to use uh, Kristen as my variable. So I'm going to say that, I'm going to say K is, um, and we're talking about the books that they've read. So I'm going to try and summarize this. Books, K is books. Kristen has read, sorry, I'm trying not to zoom in all constantly, but now my handwriting is terrible. So this is Abby read eight more books than Kristen. So Kristen, we have Kristen, and if we're trying to solve for Abby, are we going to add books to Kristen's, or are we going to subtract? Well, Abby should have more. So it's going to be Kristen plus eight. This is our expression. And so it says, Kristen read nine books in the first marking period. So we're going to substitute this nine in to our expression. So instead of k plus eight, we're going to do nine plus eight. That's 17. And so that means that Abby read 17. And if I go back over here, Abby read eight more books than Kristen. If Kristen read nine, did Abby read eight more if she read 17? Yes. So that looks good. And so I'll do finish up the, the next one, and you could do two examples on your own. Um, Abby read six more books than Kristen in the second marking period. Uh, same type of thing, I believe. No, this is six more, so eight more. But write an expression for the number of books Kristen read. So since I'm, we're trying to find out what Kristen read, we're actually going to use Abby for the variable. Um, and so Abby, so A... A is the books A is the books Abby has read and we've got um, so Abby read six more books than Kristen write the books for Kristen so Abby has to be our variable and, and if you're struggling right here to figure out what you could do, you could think, okay, well, we're really solving for Kristen, right? So Kristen, if Abby read six more books than Kristen, Kristen actually has less. So if you're Kristen, you're going to take the amount of books that Abby's read and subtract from her to figure out what you have. So that would be A minus 6. And if you're really unsure, that's fine. You can just go back and check. Keep in mind that this is the expression, not the whole thing. This is not part of the expression. We're just kind of using it to help us. A minus 6 is the expression. So if Abby read 20 books in the second marking period, we could do 20 minus 6. Remember, we're just taking the 20 and we're putting it into in for our A because A represents the books Abby has read. 20 minus 6 is 14. So 14 would represent the books that 
Kristen has read, because our ex we were writing an expression for the books Kristen has read. So if Abby's read six more books than Kristen, and we're saying that Kristen has read 14, then yeah, Abby would have read 20. That's six more. So this last part right here, while it's a little bit extra work, it really helps you make sure that this you wrote correctly, because maybe you wrote plus six instead accidentally, and that doing this would help you realize, well, no, this doesn't make any sense anymore, so maybe it's minus six, or you can kind of troubleshoot, or guess it, even, frankly, guess and check to see what type of expression might work. Um, that is all, so I know this was kind of long, but you have all these examples, uh, you can just do this part and the last four of these. And homework is very similar. Uh, that's all. So have fun.